The purpose of this record is to show you how to use your imagination to achieve your every desire. Most men are totally unaware of the creative power of imagination and invariably bow before the dictates of facts and accept life on the basis of the world without. But when you discover this creative power within yourself, you will boldly assert the supremacy of imagination and put all things in subjection to it. When the man speaks of God in man, he's totally unaware that this power called God in man is man's imagination. This is the creative power in man. There is nothing under heaven that is not plastic as potter's clay to the touch of the shaping spirit of imagination. Now this whole record is technique. I want to show you today how to put your wonderful imagination right into the feeling of your wish fulfilled and let it remain there and fall asleep in that state. And I promise you from my own experience, you will realize the state in which you sleep if you could actually feel yourself right into the situation of your fulfilled desire and continue therein until you fall asleep. As you feel yourself right into it, remain in it until you give it all the tones of reality, until you give it all the sensory vividness of reality. As you do it, in that state, quietly fall into sleep. And in a way you will never know, you could never consciously devise the means that will be employed. You will find yourself moving across a series of events, leading you towards the objective realization of this state. Now here is a practical technique. The first thing you do, you must know exactly what you want in this world. When you know exactly what you want, make as lifelike a representation as possible of what you would see and what you would touch and what you would do and physically moving in such a state. For example, suppose I wanted a home, but I had no money, but I still know what I want. I, without taking anything into consideration, I would make as lifelike a representation of the home that I would like, with all the things in it that I would want. And then, this night, as I would go to bed, I would, in a state, a drowsy, sleepy state, the state that borders upon sleep, I would imagine that I am actually in such a house, that were I to step off the bed, I would step upon the floor of that house. Were I to leave this room, I would enter the room that is adjacent to my imagined room in that house. And while I am touching the furniture and feeling it to be solidly real, and while I am moving from one room to the other in my imaginary house, I would go sound asleep in that state. And I know that in a way I could not consciously devise, I would realize my house. I have seen it work time and time again. If I wanted promotion in my business, I would ask myself what additional responsibilities would be mine were I to be given this great promotion. What would I do? What would I say? What would I see? How would I act? And then in my imagination, I would begin to see and touch and do and act as I would outwardly see and touch and act were I in that position. If I now desired the mate of my life, were I now in search of some wonderful girl or some wonderful man, what would I actually find myself doing that would imply that I have found my state? For instance, suppose now I was a lady. One thing I would definitely do, I would wear a wedding ring. I would take my imaginary hands and I would feel the ring that I would imagine to be there. And I would keep on feeling it and feeling it until it seemed to me to be solidly real. I would give it all the sensory vividness I am capable of giving anything. And while I am feeling my imaginary ring, which implies I am married, I would sleep. This story is told us in the Song of Songs, or the Song of Solomon. It is said, at night on my bed, I sought him whom my soul loved. I found him whom my soul loved. And I would not let him go until I brought him into my mother's house right into the chamber of her that conceived me. If I would take that beautiful poem and put it into modern English, into practical language, 
it would be this. While sitting in my chair, I would feel myself right into the situation of my fulfilled desire. And having felt myself into that state, I would not let it go. I would keep that mood alive. And in that mood, I would sleep. That is, taking it right into my mother's chamber, into the chamber of her that conceived me. You know, people are totally unaware of this fantastic power of the imagination. But when man begins to discover this power within him, he never plays the part that he formerly played. He doesn't turn back and become just the reflective life. From here on in, he is the affect of life. The secret of it is to center your imagination in the feeling of the wish fulfilled and remain therein. For in our capacity to live in the feeling of the wish fulfilled lies our capacity to live the more abundant life. Most of us are afraid to imagine ourselves as important and noble individuals, secure in our contribution to the world, just because at the very moment that we start our assumption, reason and our senses deny the truth of our assumption. We seem to be in the grip of an unconscious urge which makes us cling desperately to the world of familiar things and resist all that threatens to tear us away from our familiar and seemingly safe moorings. But I appeal to you to try it. If you try it, you will discover this great wisdom of the ancients, for they told it to us in their own strange, wonderful, symbolical form. But unfortunately you and I misinterpreted their story and took it for history when they intended it as instruction to simply achieve our every objective. You see, imagination puts us inwardly in touch with a world of states. These states are existent, they are present now, but they are mere possibilities while we think of them. But they become overpoweringly real when we think from them and dwell in them. 